Welcome. This is part two of our webinar series entitled Garbage In, Garbage Out, focusing on accurate field data collection strategies. Part two is concerning ArcFlash study revisions and study upkeep methods. I'm Steve Abbott, the president of Stark Safety Consultants, and I will be your speaker today. We're out of Canton, Ohio, the Pro Football Hall of Fame city. Uh, my background, real briefly, is 23 plus years as a certified OSHA outreach instructor, trainer, and arc flash analysis consultant. Um, my background started in 1991 and currently, over the past several years, have been a national training partner with the NJATC. Um, newly changed name to the Electrical Training Alliance, which is a partnership between the IBW Electrical Workers and the National Electrical Contractors Association. I've taken part over the last decade or so relating to NFPA 70E Train the Trainer courses with the Electrical Training Alliance, as well as taking part on several committees with respect to the NFPA 70E and an incident energy task group with the National Electrical Contractors Association. Our course is going to focus on three main areas. First, we're going to look at and discuss the importance of study upkeep. We're going to look at implications for study upkeep with respect to risk control methods and implications on those risk control methods. We're going to look at cost implications, cost implications with respect to cost of the overall study, the initial study, and periodic updating of the study. Um, based on a couple different guidelines that are in uh, several regulatory standards. We're going to look at an actual case study from a facility that we have been conducting both arc flash study updates, revisions, as well as system audits for one line updates, lockout tagout updates. And we'll go a little deeper into that and show you the cost analysis from the updating of the system on a more frequent basis to a typical approach of doing a base study and then doing another study once every five year period. And then finally, we'll look at just a couple template approaches to tracking changes and different ways and types of ways to uh, uh, do that. We'll look at some key things to look for. So what types of facility and system changes to look for and, and what to track. And then we'll just show you a couple example uh, methods on how we go about tracking the system to give you an idea of what you know might be a, a good way for you to, to do the tracking of changes. Just a quick disclaimer about the intent of this webinar. This webinar suggests approaches for data collection processes for an arc flash analysis and arc flash analysis studies. It is not indicating mandatory requirements. We're not um, prescribing that you must follow these template approaches that we're going to present. This is just an example of what could be done and showing you some pros and cons for this approach. Remember though, when you are about to uh, decide whether or not you're going to do uh, different types of update methods or tracking of changes methods, you know, just consider, you know, when in doubt, ask yourself why or why not if you are asked to defend your decision. Obviously, we would be talking in case of someone being injured or evidence that the study was not accurate for whatever reason. Definitely, you want to make those decisions before you begin this process. This is a very brief review from our previous webinar. You know, remembering the purpose of doing your arc flash analysis, we are taking representation of the existing field conditions and mapping and modeling it out into a drawing and diagram that we're going to be able to convey the system components as they are in the facility, not as they were intended to be, but how they actually are. And probably one of the worst feelings in the world would be to know that you've done a study and then come to find out that somebody got hurt because the information that you created was not appropriate or accurate and they were injured by trying to use that information for safe work planning. So, you know, when we talk about garbage in, garbage out, 
we are really focusing on the field data conditions as the primary and most significant single significantly most important piece of information and part of this whole process of doing a study and that is making sure what is in the field is accurately represented so let's focus on the main part of this webinar which is keeping your study up to date and let's look at some pros and cons benefits and pitfalls based on how often and how you go about keeping your system up to date just a quick recap of when you should revise your study from the 2015 NFPA 70E Article 130.5 newly changed phrasing to arc flash risk assessment. We won't get into all the details with that, but the purpose of um, your arc flash risk assessment is to determine number one, does an arc flash hazard exist? We're not going to talk about that right now. That's a different part of this process, but if the hazard exists, we need to do that risk assessment to determine safe work practices that are appropriate, an arc flash boundary distance, and the PPE that would need to be used within the arc flash boundary. So that's the basis of doing these uh, arc flash risk assessments. Uh, part two of this article deals with the focus today, and that is it says it needs to be updated when a major modification or renovation takes place. So, you know, asking that question, what is a major modification? You know, clearly if it affects, as it says below, could affect the results of the arc flash risk assessment would be the items up above. Um, appropriate safe related work practices could be altered, arc flash boundary could be altered, or the PPE to be used may need to be altered. So if something could change those values, that's major. Um, it says it shall be reviewed periodically at intervals not to exceed five years. And that's really what we're going to focus the bulk of this presentation on. It says not to exceed five years. It does not say, and I repeat this, it does not say that you do not have to do any updating for a five year period. And that seems to be a very common uh, comment from some of our customers that we get involved with that they're saying, well, yeah, we did a study four years ago, so we don't have to do one for another year. And unfortunately, that means for them, they're not doing anything. They just have their system in place as it was four years ago, and nothing has to change until year five. So um, that's what we're going to talk about today. The importance of understanding that interval not to exceed five years doesn't mean you don't have to do one prior to five years we really want to focus on what could be changing in the system that could make an impact on our ability to determine what's safe and what work practices we should implement so simply just looking at what can happen over five years now obviously this is going to depend on what type of uh, system you have um, if we just take um, a real common ever-changing type environment such as a manufacturing plant this makes it all well and um, true um, but you know system changes occur what happens to your system over five years you know machines get moved equipment gets added equipment gets removed you know expansion you know remodeling um, you know downsizing all those different things that can change the system um, you know and what happens your labels may become inaccurate or how often do you have equipment that's been added since the last study and how long do you go where you potentially don't even have anything other than a generic warning label on that piece of equipment no information about um, hazard information or risk information so you know the labels become inaccurate or there's missing labels drawings now can become inaccurate and how does that affect your lockout tagout procedures when the drawings that you're using and creating from your model um, aren't up to date at a specific time and now you're trying to use them to determine power sources and finally you think about doing a base study but no updates or no activity for a period of time where there's a lot of activity in the facility and a lot of change in the facility what happens over time the risk of increased chance that there's going to be a breakdown in your job planning proper uh, uh, methods appropriateness to your methods you know so over time there's greater risk 
that you are not going to be able to do a proper job planning or job briefing or whatever it is that you're trying to do to safely determine how you're going to do your job. That just increases over time when the system has not been maintained. Kind of a similar structure to the idea of preventative maintenance on your equipment. The longer that goes without maintenance on your equipment, the less uh, likely we can expect it to perform the way it's supposed to. So now we want to look at a case study from a facility that we performed an arc flash analysis on back in 2010. It was a manufacturing plant that had approximately 3,600, we'll call study points, so pieces of equipment where evaluation needed to be uh, done from an arc flash study perspective. And this was an ongoing facility evaluation where right from the beginning, we had a tracking program in place that was started during the basic uh, study and it was a periodic tracking as well as updating of the one line and you know we're looking at since 2010 um, this is 2015 now we're actually on arc flash study revision 7 um, so this was one where there was constant evaluation and constant updating of, of redlining and periodic updates were done from various degrees some were just partial studies where part of one page of the, the model was was updated and evaluated um, there were some again during this period 2010 to 2015 we went through two uh, revisions to the nfpa 70e so there were some electrical safety program changes that were implemented and in the context it may have changed some of the way that the labels terminology and work practices were implemented and at the same time there were times where there were multiple revisions done in a given year uh, based on some big projects that took place, some big renovations, and they were done along the way. This was done also in conjunction with a monthly process of reviewing the documented tracking sheets, going out and field verifying those tracking sheets, and marking down on the master red line diagram. We'll talk about the red line diagrams and you know the idea of filtering that process and making sure that you don't have too many cooks in the kitchen so to speak or too many hands involved with that documentation um, you know not a problem to have multiple people out there tracking changes but the less people you have involved with actually taking the responsibility of getting the information and putting it down on the red line the better off you're going to be there's gonna be less chance of somebody uh, you know not catching what the other person is doing um, but this was done uh, periodic basis so roughly you know a week sometimes two um, on a monthly basis to go out track the changes find the changes that were done and with the, the the workers that were in the facility going out field verifying redlining the diagram in conjunction with also then updating the lockout tagout procedures that were affected by these changes as well as doing a re evaluation of any risk components aside from the hazard components and uh, again then par um, very often doing some arc flash study revisions and updates so we're going to look at that next and uh, give you a breakdown of this five year actually six year window that uh, will compare that to the concept of just doing a base study and then nothing else for five years so here's a cost analysis over a period of years and actually it says over five years but the base study was done and then there was five years after that so we're looking at the five years after the initial study was done and the costs and the changes that were involved in track we have two different uh, bar graphs so the first the yellow bar graph that's a hypothetical for this system were this system to have an initial study done and if we did not do anything over a five-year window at the end of that five years there had been no system verification no tracking of changes and we would have had to go back and the question is why wouldn't you go back and re collect data to determine what changes have taken place in this facility and again this was a manufacturing plant that was constantly changing so to go and say that at the end of five years you're going to take your model and just you know go out and do a quick review uh, probably not the most appropriate with the number of changes that took place there were major changes um, over the course of the five plus years 
So that's the yellow column. The green column shows the approach that we took, and this is a constant tracking of changes. So the initial study was done in 2010. Each year shows the activity that was done both from tracking and arc flash study revisions. So the first year was primarily just um, you know, some initial hazard reduction recommendations. Um, the cost involved here was not the cost of the recommendations. This was the cost to re redo the model, revise the system, and you know, adjust and put some new labels on um, at that point. Uh, year two, again, a combination of this constant tracking of changes. There was a, a significant project that took place, so there was a culmination of a lot of time um, collecting and field verifying the actual as-built conditions from the renovation that took place, as well as you know periodic changes that went on through the course of that year. Um, year three, some similar changes. I think at this point in time, we also had some changes um, to uh, the design style of labels that the facility went through. So there also was a uh, redoing of most of the labels you know, during this revision. And same thing in year four. Again, another big renovation project. So this actually um, is a combination of several revisions that were done this year. Like I said, from the initial study now to year five po post the study, um, we we're actually on revision of the study number seven. And currently where we're at right now, we are completing um, revision seven. And revision seven has had another combination of major renovation projects as well as significant activity on a monthly basis. But if we look at this, um, first we look at the constant activity, but bottom line, a five year, a, a five year window total from the base study to uh, that five year window, we're looking at with no tracking and changes and just doing an initial study and then a five year window study, we're looking at almost $208,000 based on the size of this system and the cost that was involved for field verifying the whole system and also doing the engineering deliverables and then going out and installing, you know, 3,000 plus labels versus the method of constantly updating the study and tracking changes and doing several small revisions. First of all, you'll notice we never got to a five year window where we had to do the study all over again. So it was just a constant, you know, in evolving and constant tracking and, and updating the system. But the total cost from the original base study to the current status of tracking of changes was only $195,339. So more than $10,000 savings and the added benefits that were of the constant upkeep of the system. And that's what we'll look at next is the, the benefits of doing this even beyond just the cost savings, the cost savings from the study itself. But there were so many other benefits and savings that were indirect that don't even show up on this chart. And we'll look at that coming up on the next slide. So there really are a lot of indirect benefits of keeping your study current and not letting it go um, for that five year you know, interval. Um, you know, beyond just the cost savings that we showed from the case study, um, of just the cost of doing the engineering in smaller chunks and revisions and you know not having that large increment of complete system field verification you know number one your labels are going to stay accurate you're going to have more uh, accuracy in real time of keeping those labels up to date if your study stays current your drawings are going to be more accurate which is going to allow you to have more verification of system connectivity which is going to also allow your risk control methods to be confirmed and have more confidence that they're appropriate. Your hazard reduction efforts are going to be able to be validated because you're going to be able to have some accurate uh, model representation for those. Um, but beyond safety, there's a lot of other things. You know, number one is when you are doing new projects or you're putting projects out for bid uh, in your facility, the estimates are going to be able to be done more efficiently. They're going to be coming in with better prices because they're going to be more accurate. They're going to have the ability to map and see where they're going to be connecting uh, to your existing system. They're going to know 
uh, how to do load calculations and determine you know connectivity and where they're going to be putting equipment and not have to you know figure on maybe a little additional time and cost for even figuring that thing out once they get the job they're going to have a better ability to do that so it's going to save the company a lot of cost um, from wasted you know proposal dollars at the same time when your model's up to date and it's current it's going to be a lot easy to verify system changes and determine uh, new designs and implications to your system before it's installed it's going to be a lot easier to do that in the model in the easy power software to verify what that new machine that new load that new uh, piece of equipment or that modification you're going to make you're going to be able to determine it while it's on paper and you know avoid any unnecessary uh, revamping of uh, installations afterwards once you find out that there's a problem with it but probably the most important thing overall is your safety culture is going to remain a priority it's going to maintain and remain in the forefront of the workers activities you think about the concept of out of sight out of mind and the idea of that we have a study the focus that happens when, when you go through that process, when you when you when you do your analysis, you put labels on. Most of the time, you know, at that point, the focus is really high. The priority is really high. Um, you may have done it beforehand, or maybe you're doing it now, determining your updated electrical safe work practice program. You're getting PPE for everyone. You're training people based on these hazard assessment values, and now everybody's work practice and culture has been you know updated or restructured um, based on this arc flash analysis if you let it sit there and it doesn't get updated for another five years you think of all the things that happen new equipment gets installed and now there's no label there new equipment gets moved and what happens if you know we've seen this way too many times where a piece of equipment had a uh, detailed incident energy warning label from an arc flash analysis the piece of equipment gets moved to another part of the building but that label doesn't get removed and it gets just installed and that label stays with the values on that label and it has no bearing necessarily on where it's connected now so over time what happens is if nothing is kept up to date and it's not tracked now you have loss of focus loss of priority on your arc flash assessment until that five-year window comes around but oh, we have to totally refocus again and get back in the priority mode of we got to update the calculations and, and change everything that we were doing or re-update everything that we're doing because now it may not be appropriate anymore uh, it just doesn't make sense to let that time period lapse and not have that focus um, it's it's a false sense of um, security or a false sense of safety when we let that time lapse without verifying that the system uh, may or may not have changed so definite benefit to keeping it current both from a safety standpoint and a cost standpoint and just the overall focus of your safety program we'll start talking about tracking changes since we've already discussed the benefits and the importance of keeping your system current and at least tracking the changes so that when it is time to to update your study you don't have to worry about that giant investment of going back out and field verifying it's, it's a lot easier to do it in smaller chunks and if you you look here you see that we have you know again just going back to some of the things we did in the previous webinar uh, existing documents versus field verification and the importance and of verifying the changes from the drawings um, with respect to being consistent with the as-built conditions and you know just supporting that data is the IEEE 1584A 2001 or 2011 rather um, you know the largest part of your study is by far collecting field data so just re-emphasizing that and how important the field data verification is will lead us now into the last part of our presentation which is some examples and some uh, methodology for tracking changes and at this point I'm going to turn over the presentation to the senior analyst for Stark Safety Consultants Kurt Fair and I'll let Kurt um, lead you through the uh, the template approach for how we go about tracking changes 
Thank you, Steve. One of the main concerns that I have when it comes to the accuracy of an arc flash analysis is the fact that many systems change constantly. Uh, fuse changes, any protective device changes, uh, changes in system configuration, setting changes, um, motor loads added or removed from a system, all of those variables uh, come into play when you start looking at analysis results. As Steve mentioned earlier, uh, many times a piece of equipment will be moved, especially bus plugs, uh, will be moved to a different location in a bus duct or a totally different bus duct and the arc flash label uh, that is installed on that device and, and the values that are on that label associated with that specific point in the system uh, that label goes with the bus plug gets installed someplace else and nobody ever thinks about the arc flash label itself once the equipment is installed the it's looked at as all oh, it already has an arc flash label it must be good there's no reason to, to identify any changes here or anything uh, the problem is is the values on that label are totally inaccurate at that point there's no way to know if they're accurate or not until those changes are documented in the system typically the best way to track system changes is by utilizing the documentation that is provided with the original arc flash analysis the one line diagram should be detailed enough to allow changes to be indicated on the drawings and one master set of drawings should be kept in a centralized location not only for reference for connectivity as required for lockout tagout but also as a primary collection point for documentation of all the changes that have occurred in the system since the data collection for that analysis was completed. That's a point where a lot of organizations have a problem because depending on the, the size of the facility, there may be uh, several different engineering uh, groups that work with the electrical system, uh, making changes, uh, making variations, adjustments in order to keep their specific areas up and running and up to speed with the rest of the facility. Um, at this point, it, it can be uh, a little bit cumbersome but if each group holds one set of their drawings and references only their set of drawings you can still pull all of it together to produce one master set that has the changes for the entire facility at some point in time in any change that occurs uh, someone needs to be able to evaluate those changes and determine how much of a variance this change could make in the system overall. I mean, if you're talking uh, changes in the main switch gear for a facility, uh, you could be changing values for the entire facility, every device in the facility. If you're talking about a change that occurs way downstream and it's just a, a very small area of a change here, you know, there may only be 10 or 15 devices or one device or two devices that it actually changes values for. Um, you need to have somebody with a little bit of knowledge and experience to be able to, to determine what is actually going to change based on the change that's taking place. And as your system changes, there are going to be revisions to the documents associated with the study, uh, particularly your one line diagrams. They should indicate the changes that have taken place. Something that you're going to want to keep in mind is uh, that the revision numbers and the drawing numbers associated with the changes. Uh, the one master set of one line diagrams should be the complete set. If, if the study is on revision seven and at some point in time a determination is made that changes have, been, have occurred in the system that warrant a reevaluation of the values uh, you know it may be a depending on the change it may be a complete set revision it may be a single page revision um, it really doesn't matter how that occurs as long as the documentation that you have available to your personnel the documentation that your personnel are going to use to determine connectivity to determine 
analysis results, incident energy values and such is up to date and current. When we start talking about documenting changes, we need to consider the fact that a change as presented earlier could be a fuse change, it could be a setting change, it could be a, an equipment location change, it could also be a simple change as uh, adding a load to a spare disconnect switch. Uh, in this one line diagram here we, we've got uh, the device 4A27 that is a spare disconnect switch appears not to have any fuses in it and there's low, no load attached. Documenting changes really is is as simple as uh, redlining the one line diagrams that you have. Uh, this is a very simple example but here we can see that a spare disconnect switch is has been determined to be used to feed a utility receptacle. We've documented the fuses that were installed in the, in the disconnect switch, uh, the conduit wire, wire type, distance uh, from the disconnect switch to the next device, a non-fused disconnect switch. Um, we then have the conduit wire and distance to the utility receptacle itself. That's a simple, very simple, a red line of a one line diagram that indicates a change in the system. Many people would, would probably say, why even bother with this? It's only a utility receptacle and, and utility receptacles are not required to be in any sort of analysis or anything like that. But now we have a new 30 amp non-fuse disconnect switch, 480 volt, that does not have an arc flash label. Uh, at this point in time, uh, you're going to want to include that in the model, do a quick analysis, uh, provide some sort of documentation and labeling for that piece of equipment. Otherwise, it's just a it's it's a wild card in your system. It's a it's a everything else in your system has arc flash labels, incident energy values, working distances, uh, voltages, and everything. And all of a sudden, you come across this disconnect switch uh, with no hazard information on it. Uh, this is a very simple. There's no motor load that's going to affect any devices around it. Uh, it's just, just simply another device added to the system and the one line being updated to allow someone to see the connectivity between devices for lockout tagout. Here we have another change in the system. Uh, we can see here that a control panel uh, for some sort of equipment was uh, removed, replaced with a uh, fuse disconnect switch, and transformer, control transformer, 120 volt load. Again, we're just we're documenting the conduit wire insulation and distance. Uh, the, if there's a protective device, the, the name of the device, the device ID that you want it to have. Uh, amperage ratings, the fuses, catalog numbers and sizes, conduit wire and distance for the uh, the next downstream load, or the, in this case, the control transformer. You, you know, there's information that you typically would would collect for a transformer, and then the downstream load associated with that. Again, a change in the system. Nothing really significant that's going to alter values throughout the system. But at the same time, now you had one control panel that had a transformer inside of it that uh, had an arc flash label and was indicated as such. Now it appears that you would have two devices, one uh, disconnect switch and then a separate transformer. So now you have two devices that have been added to the system, uh, which need to be included. Arc flash, those devices need arc flash labels. The last few slides have been associated with redlining the one-line diagrams. This is a system modification tracking form that we've developed that allows the communication between the person who actually performs the work or performs the change, and we're talking about the electrician or the technician or the repairman, it allows that person to communicate those changes to the person who is in charge of keeping the arc flash analysis up to date. It's very basic information that's included on this form, uh, basic 
uh, device ID or the, the existing device that the change is associated with, um, any location on any one-line diagrams or location in the facility, very basic information about the changes that occurred. It also includes a place for the person who did the actual work to indicate um, their contact information, uh, let you know who made this change. Uh, this form is simply to be used as a red flag that can be attached to the work order documents that uh, personnel are required to fill out and complete when making repairs or changes in the system. Uh, it can be part of the project planning. It, you can use this form in any number of ways. The point is for it to be used to transmit that change information to the person who is in charge of keeping the ARC flash study up to date. It can also be used to review the changes to make that determination as to whether or not this change is truly significant enough to warrant the reevaluation of the values in the study to make sure everything's okay. One thing you've got to keep in mind about your electrical system once you've performed an arc flash analysis. The system actually, the system and the documentation and everything that's associated actually comes alive. And it's a living system that as changes occur, it affects the health of that system. If you document your changes regularly, if you make revisions to your study, update your study documents, your arc flash analysis is going to stay more healthy. And the personnel who interact with it are ultimately going to be safer with less risk. As was indicated in the previous slides associated with the case study, if you only update your system every five years, you're really losing the true benefit and the true purpose of performing the study to begin with. To finish up our presentation, we want to again remind everyone, you know, understand why you're performing the arc flash analysis to begin in the first place. And at the same token, remember now, hopefully you see some of the, the pros and cons and benefits um, of keeping your study current not dragging that study out for that five-year um, window, which again says not to exceed five years. It doesn't say that you don't have to do more during that five-year period. Uh, but hopefully we understand the benefits of those and we realize why we're doing it to begin with is to minimize injury and allow workers to go home at night and being able to give them accurate information that they can do their job planning with so that they can do their job safely. This concludes our webinar. Please reach out to us if you have any questions. If you'd like some more information on the case study, we will be uh, writing a more detailed article on that case study and publishing it here very soon. Um, also, if you're interested in some more details on our tracking methods and our tracking sheets, we'd be happy to share those with you. Um, look forward uh, to seeing this recorded webinar on the Easy Power website soon. And again, we thank you for your time.